go. Got a 2013 Jeep Patriot. Not a lot of miles. You can hear the tranny whining. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Patriot Chronicles. Got a 2013, I think here, or 14. Anyways, uh, I picked it up, said the tranny was slipping. I didn't even drive it home, they delivered it. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is do a service on the tranny. So I took the big shield. Underneath here, there's a big shield. You'll see it right there. And it's got just six bolts, get my finger. Three in the back, three in the front, and then on the side, there's two little plastic clippies and that whole cover comes off then the whole bottom of your motor is exposed and tranny so then take a 10 millimeter and start running around that tranny pan I started in the back got my drip pan here some of it splattered I got a little mess but that's that's what happens but anyways start pulling those 10 mils out from back to front and as you get to the front It'll start dripping out. So I'm letting it drip out until it gets mostly empty and then I'll pop the rest of those off. Uh, but in the meantime there, to do it right, so there's a filter in the tranny, right? Well, there's another filter in here. So you gotta take the battery out. This cover here for the intake comes off. A couple little twisties here and it'll pull out of the way. Disconnect the battery, take it out in the front, there'll be a holder. Then the battery tray will have some bolts in it and you'll pull that out and you'll see the top of the transmission there. Um, here's the tray I just took out right here, battery tray. So, anyways, inside here is a filter that most people miss. So there's two filters in this tranny. So you have to take this cover off here, and then that filter will come out. And it should be this little dude here. Um, and it's going to take a little rubber gasket if you've watched my other Patriot videos. Oh, hey, this one came with one. Okay, good, so it does have it in there. So that thing is gonna go in there, I think backwards like that or something. Anyways, we'll see once we get to that point. And then this other one is the tranny filter and gasket for down below in the bottom. So once I get the pan off, we'll come back and get to that. But so far all I've needed is a 10 millimeter and maybe a screwdriver. So stay tuned. All right, here we've got the cover off. It's sitting there. Here's the pan, or the, the bottom of the transmission. You'll see that's the valve body. Um, little filter's gonna be right in here. Pan should have a mag, there's a couple magnets there. You see a little bit of material, but not too bad. I don't know what all that stuff is though. That is some nasty looking stuff. Probably not good. But, and I knew that going in, I bought this rig with problems. Oh yeah, look right here. Must be where the magnets sit, maybe some extra material. But, um, yeah. So, you'll see there's three bolts that hold that in. That I can see from here anyway. And we'll pop that off and that'll take care of that filter. Then we'll go up top there and uh, get that bad boy. And yeah, we'll put new filters in it new fluid in it and we'll give it a shot. So the problem with this one, like I said, was they claimed it was slipping and wouldn't move. I don't know, I got it. I have drove it. And I, other than a loud whining noise when it runs, I haven't had a problem with it slipping. So I'm hoping this will cure the whining sound. If you guys know anything else, please leave it in the description below. But I'm hoping this will cure it. Maybe a filter's never been changed or something. It's got a hundred and 13,000 miles on it or 130 or I don't remember but somewhere in that range so about the life of a CVT crappy transmission these things are junk but I like flipping them for fun so anyways stay tuned okay I took the three bolts out of the filter that went back there one is a little bit longer than the others um, but it'll be obvious there's only obviously gonna be one way that it goes back in so this is your filter you guys can see it okay just underneath here it's got a lot of fluid in it but so I'm gonna take the new one make sure it's the same make sure there's an o-ring on it I didn't look because you'll see one on this one and then put it in place and then once I do that I can replace the gasket on the pan which I have over here and you can see the stuff on there but so you'll want to clean this up I don't want to get a bunch of brake cleaner bunch of something you'll want to clean that up because it gets a lot of junk in there so yeah so 
one's not too bad, really. The last one I made a video on was really terrible in here, so it makes me hopeful that maybe I need to replace just a pump or do something, and I might have to, might get lucky and might not have to take the whole tranny out and rebuild it. So, yeah. All right, here's the new filter, old filter. It looks pretty much the same. The new one did have the O-ring on it. I do see it's a little dented here. It probably won't matter, but I'll try to straighten it a little bit before I get it put on there. But here you can see, well, the pickup is in a little different place, isn't it? That's interesting. I wonder if that'll matter. But here you can see how dirty this one is inside. The filter looks like crap. This one, you can see through it. So, I'm going to hope maybe that's part of the problem, is it's just not getting the fluid it needs. That's what made it whine, so we'll find out. All right, guys, we got the new filter in place. It looks like it should work fine. So I'm going to just go for it. Maybe it's an updated style or something. I don't know. But she's on there. I've got the gasket taken off of there, so I'm just going to put the new gasket on it and put it back up in place. And then we'll go up to filter number two. So everything down here is really nice and clean. The pan's really clean on this one. So far, I'm pretty happy. So make sure you get the right tranny fluid, though, for when you go to fill this thing. You've got to have that Mopar CVT F plus 4. Check the links down below in the descriptions. I always put info down there and uh, links to where you guys can get your stuff. So, so far, it's not taking very long. Um, I don't even think I've spent an hour on it yet. So this is a pretty quick service you could do on a Saturday afternoon. Okay, here's the top. I got the four bolts out. You can see I pulled the plate away. Just got an O-ring on that side. Whoops. Let's see here, I'm blocking the light. But anyways, right in there, right here is your little filter. I haven't even pulled it out yet. You gotta kind of wiggle it and work it out. It's coming, there we go. There it is. So, make sure the other one's the same and poke it back in there. So underneath here, you'll want to put your trip, your drip pan, catch some of that stuff because it's going to run out. But uh, here you can see I've got the pan back on. Everything looked good in there. So we're getting close. Okay, we're going to put the new one in. Let's see if I can get a little shot of what's in there. So it's got to get on that little shaft right there. That's what the O-ring's for, so obviously it's going to go in this way. That's about it, so get it down there. Just kind of feel its way on in there. Oop, O-ring fell out. Alright, when we get this thing in there with both hands, then we'll be back. Okay, there's the new filter down in there. Just had to kind of get it in there right. So you want to make sure when you take the old one off that the O-ring comes off with it, right? Because if it doesn't, you're not going to be able to put two O-rings in there because sometimes, you know, if that sticks in there, you're not going to know and the other one won't go in. So there's that. I'm just going to put that plate back up there in four bolts and then that finishes off the filters. Got the four bolts back in that baby. That's done. I'm going to put the battery tray back in um, and the battery and then we're gonna probably push it off the stands that I'm on here because so it's sitting level and then we'll go through the goofy process of the filling the fluid and how you got to do that because that's kind of stupid on how they do these but here's the filters that I used I'll have a link down below in the description Battery tray's in, going for the battery. Okay, you gotta have one of these goofy dipsticks. You gotta buy it extra, because these cars don't have deep dipsticks on the tranny deal. This is where you check your fluid. So you pull this little dude out. It's just a plug, it's nothing. So your dipstick's gonna check in there. Um, these come with this paper chart. This is a CVT fluid level, so going by your fluid temperature, which everything's cold, so I'm going to go at the bottom of the chart here. So you got your min and max numbers, and then on the bottom of this thing here, you, I don't know if you can see, I'll take it out of there and show you, but it's got all those numbers are on it, so um, 
You're gonna put fluid in, keep checking till you get probably in the middle is about what I'd do, maybe to the upper range since it was a fresh change. And uh, test running it in neutral. And uh, then you'll know. Here you can see that dipstick. I hope that's showing up for you guys. Make it focus on my hand. With all the different millimeter marks. So you're gonna shove this in that tube till it bottoms out and then your fluid level will show on this. Um, for temperature, since everything's cold, you know what your outdoor temperature is. So if it's, you know, 70 degrees, 100 degrees where you live, your car's probably close to that. It'll get you in the ballpark. So that's what we'll do next. Got our idle in here. I've got it in neutral. I don't know. They say, I haven't seen anything real definitive that has to be in park or neutral, but I was shooting for around the 30 mark right here on the dipstick. So here's what you do while she's running. Just pump it down in there, bottomed out, pull it back out, and then you gotta kinda try to read it. And it's kind of tricky because it can be bubbly and weird. Keep doing it a bunch of times. It looks to me like I'm right about to the 40 mark on there. You can kind of see the... Come on, focus. Anyway, we're almost to the 40 mark, so I'm going to call that good. I'm going to put the cap in and go for a ride. You'll hear it's nice and quiet. So this actually did cure my problem initially. Uh, test run, we'll find out from there. But so far, I think it's looking good. So. You got a whiny transmission, you might get lucky, and this is all you need. So, I put that cord in, and this is a 1.3 gallon can. You can see how much I've got left at this point. So, that's with both filters, fluid change. Okay, here it is running, no whine. No noise whatsoever with the motor. She's golden. So happy. Doing a little road test. Everything's looking good, sounding good. Um, at the beginning of the video, I'll, I'm sure I threw in a sound of it whining and making lots of noise. But um, I think we got lucky with this one, boys and girls. She's running like a boss, making no noise whatsoever. Shifting fine. Pretty stoked about that. So now you know, okay? Save you guys a bunch of money. Uh, the CVT fluid is not cheap, but you know, I think it looks like one can is gonna do you. So that's all you need. Pay attention to how to do it. Get yourself a dipstick and you're good to go. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it.